Hello there, and welcome to this introduction to Dolby Atmos and our Dolby Atmos composer. Let's dive in. Dolby Atmos is an object-based audio format and is designed for creating three-dimensional or immersive audio mixes. This format can have up to 128 audio channels, each encoded with its own metadata containing all the necessary information for playback systems to properly playback your content. The idea behind Atmos is that you only have to create one mix and the playback system will adapt that mix to sound great on any reproduction system ranging from simple headphones to the soundbar under your TV all the way up to multi-speaker systems with lots of speakers and subwoofers positioned all over your room. This is done by encoding metadata into lots of discrete channels and having the playback system mix those channels in the most optimized way for each playback scenario. Since the playback system creates a mix based on your metadata, object-based formats tend to be quite future-proof and will even work on playback systems which have not yet been invented. At its core, Dolby Atmos has two kinds of channels, bed channels and dynamic objects. Think of the bed as being a virtual speaker layout where you can pan and place most of your tracks in your session. In Dolby Atmos, the standard bed format is 7.1.2, which means you have seven speakers around you on a horizontal plane, one LFE channel for low frequency effects, and two height speakers above you. In addition to the bed channels, Atmos also has dynamic objects. These objects tend to change their position over time and therefore are treated differently during playback. Essentially, the playback system gives extra attention to these channels to make sure that they are faithfully reproduced in space regardless of your playback system. So, how does all this work in real life using our Dolby Atmos Composer? In the Composer plugin, you can see a list of connections on the left side of the screen. On the right side, you'll see a graphical representation with meters of up to 128 input channels, as well as some of the output settings for monitoring. The Dolby Atmos Composer plugin receives its input signals from our Dolby Atmos Beam plugin, which is installed together with the Composer. The Beam plugin can send audio from anywhere in your session to the Composer. The incoming signals can either be assigned and panned around the bed or defined as dynamic objects. The Dolby Atmos Composer acts like a master channel where the signals from the Beam plugins are mixed together and an Atmos file is created. You can place Beam plugins anywhere in your session, like on individual channels, on subgroups, auxes, or basically wherever you want to tap a signal to send to the Composer plugin. When viewing input channels in the Composer plugin, you'll notice all bed channels have an orange border around them, while dynamic objects are bordered in blue. Each incoming beam connection can either be assigned and panned to the fixed bed channel or set up as dynamic objects. That assignment is usually done in the Composer plugin. If you want the audio from a beam plugin to be treated as a dynamic object, you can set it on the row of that beam plugin in the connections list. Now, our Dolby Atmos Composer has extra flexibility that goes beyond what other Atmos tools offer in the marketplace. Instead of the term bed, we use the term composite because Dolby Atmos only has certain formats available for the bed. If you want to create a bed with a non-standard number of channels, you would have to construct it as a combination of bed channels and dynamic objects that act like bed channels. These dynamic objects would not be used as intended and would actually be in a fixed position in space where your virtual speakers would be located. So, for example, if the composite is set to 7.1.2, as it is done here in our session, it only consists of Dolby Atmos bed channels. However, if the composite of a beam is changed to 9.1.6, more channels are going to be needed in order to accommodate those six extra speakers. They are added to the composite group as dynamic objects. You'll see those channels added immediately in the composite group with the orange border. As the name suggests, the composite is now composed of the bed channels and dynamic objects, but mixing-wise, it's treated just like a normal bed. If you're using the essential version of our Dolby Atmos Composer plugin, you can set the composite number format using the selector above the input channel graphics. If you're using the full version of the Composer plugin, you can set the composite format 
for each beam plugin individually. If your beam plugins have different composite formats, they are combined to create one big composite, and each beam then only uses the channels that match its own selected composite. Let's select 5.1 here for this beam plugin. Note that if you select one of the beam plugins in the connections list, the channels it uses are highlighted in the input channel graphics. When you have finished your mix, it's time to export and deliver your work. Dolby Atmos content can be delivered in various different file formats, but the most common format is ADM BWF. ADM stands for Audio Definition Model, and it is a standard for describing the properties of audio. BWF stands for Broadcast Wave File and is a commonly used format in the world of broadcast. So a Dolby Atmos ADM BWF file contains all the audio channels of your mix in WAV format and the Dolby Atmos metadata as ADM. Now, if you want to create the ADM BWF file of your mix, you'll need to set the start and end points of your session as the in point and out point of the Dolby Atmos Composer plugin. Next, you click the export button and tell the plugin where to save the file. Now you can either use the bounce function of your DAW for a fast offline export, or you can just hit play before or at the in point and let the session play through. The bounce function tends to be faster while the real-time export lets you hear the final mix. However, the results are exactly the same. Once the export is complete, a success message appears and you can admire your newly created export file. Notice that this file has a .wav extension just like standard WAV files. This is normal. Another useful feature of our Dolby Atmos Composer plugin is that you can import previously exported ADM BWF files. This is very handy if you want to easily play back an export without reloading the entire session. You can also make certain kinds of corrections and re-export your work, again, without having to reload the entire session. For all the details about the functions of the Beam and Composer plugins, please check out our in-depth tutorials, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news, tips, and updates. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.